in Matthew 24, in the section of Matthew's gospel that is frequently referred to as the little apocalypse, Jesus says, be alert, therefore, because you do not know on what day your Lord is coming, but this you know, that if the master of the house had known in what watch the thief comes, he would have been awake and would not have permitted his household to be breached. And then Jesus launches into a parable which prominently features slaves. Who then is the faithful and prudent slave whom the master appointed over his household slaves to give them food at the proper time? How blissful that slave whom his master will find so doing when he arrives. Amen, I tell you, that he will appoint him over all his possessions. But if that slave, being base, says in his heart, my master is taking a long time and begins to beat his fellow slaves and eats and drinks with the wine sots, that slave's master will come on a day on which he is not expecting him and at an hour in which he is unaware and he will cut him in two and will assign him his lot with the dissemblers. There will be weeping and grinding of teeth there. First, before we get to anything else here. When Jesus says he will cut him in two, that was a common phrase in Jesus's day, which is not meant to be taken literally. I could say that the offensive line of the Philadelphia Eagles will cut the defensive line of the New York Giants in two, but that doesn't mean that anyone is actually going to be literally cut apart. It just means that the better team is going to win. Cut him in two is a hyperbolic statement that means things are going to be bad, but not that bad. Okay. In this parable, the slave, which the master gives oversight of his property to, is meant to represent us or at least the leaders of the Christian community. The master represents God, of course. In this parable, God the master entrusts us, the slaves, with the kingdom of God on earth, expecting us to be faithful stewards. Of course, we all know that some people will be less trustworthy if they think they are not being overseen. Just think about a classroom of students when the teacher leaves the room or an employer tracking an employee's keystrokes and mouse movements. The faithful and prudent slave doesn't need the oversight. They take care of the property and the other slaves entrusted to their care in a responsible manner. When the master returns, unannounced, the master is pleased with what he finds. The base slave begins to beat the other slaves and gets drunk as soon as the master is out of sight. When the master returns, unannounced, the master is furious. Of course, we're meant to be the former kind of slave, not the latter. Our master and Lord, Jesus, has ascended into heaven, and we are to be faithful to him until the day that he returns unannounced. The parable shows some common elements of slavery in the ancient world. We see a slave master giving enormous responsibility to a slave. And we know that that happened. We see one slave be appointed over and above 
other slaves, and we know that that happened. And we see slaves judged on the quality of their work, and you better believe that that happened. This is yet another parable where we are identified as the slave, another parable that puts us in the position of total obedience and devotion. There's no record of Jesus's first hearers of this parable being offended by this. They were used to slavery, and they were used to seeing the world through this lens. But they were probably just as challenged as we are of considering discipleship as one of complete devotion. 